Hello guys, welcome back to Civil Engineering YouTube channel. Please subscribe our channel for daily civil engineering videos. In today's lecture, we are going to analyze this frame which is composed of two columns and one beam. So we are going to find out the support reactions and to draw the shear force and bending moment diagram for this frame. There is a horizontal or lateral load acting on one column with a magnitude of 5 kN and acting at a distance of 5 meter from this support and the total height of the column is 10 meter. The load, the uniformly distributed load acting on the beam is 4 kN per meter and it is distributed over the whole length of the beam which is 8 meter. So the first step will have to find out the support reactions for this frame. So let's consider this is A support and this is B support. This support will have two support reactions because it is a hinge support so it can resist both the vertical and the horizontal load. So RAY and RAX. This is only rotor supports it can only resist the vertical loads so RB. Now how to find out RAX is there is no horizontal load acting on the whole frame except this only load 5 kN. So the whole horizontal load will be simply taken by this support. So simply RAX will be equal to the 5 kN. Because there is no other horizontal uh, reaction provided by any other support. So the whole 5 kN load will be taken by this support reactions which will be 5 kN. Now how to find out RAY and RB. So RAY and RB are unknown to us. To find out these, we have to take either summation of vertical forces equal to zero or summation of moment at any point equal to zero. With the help of these two equations, we can find out the support reactions. But hence, there are two unknowns, RAY and RB, so we cannot use this equation. We can only use this equation when there are only one unknown. So we can only use this equation to find out the support reaction. So now summation of moment at any point equal to zero and let's consider summation of moment at point A is equal to zero. So we have to find out the all the low, all the moments created by the load about point A. So and assume that the clockwise moment is taken as positive and the anti-clockwise moment is taken as negative. Now first load that creates the moment about point A is the 5 kN. So it is acting here in the clockwise direction about point A. So it is 5 kN is the load and the moment arm for this load is the distance from this point up to A point which is 5 meter. So 5 into 5 because moment is equal to the force into moment arm. So force is 5 kN and the moment arm is the perpendicular distance from the load up to point where you want to find the moment. So it is from this point up to this point it, it is 5 meter. So 5 into 5 is the moment created by this load at point A. Now the moment created by this load in the form of distributed load. So it will be so this is acting downward so again it creates moment in the anti-clockwise direction about point sorry in the clockwise direction about point A. So it will be plus because it is clockwise and the moment arm and the moment will be 4 is the load multiply with the distance it is distributed multiply with the moment arm the moment arm is this load 4 into 8 is 32 and this load will act at the center of this beam so the center of this beam means the 8 divided by 2 it will be at 4 meter so 4 meter so this load will create the moment about point A in the clockwise direction now the last one that creates moment about point A is the RB. So RB is at the upward direction and it will create the moment in the anti-clockwise direction about point A. So it will be taken as negative RB multiplied with the moment arm. The moment arm is the distance from this B point up to A which is 8 meter. Summation of all the moment at point A equal to 0. Now if we shift this value to the right side. So we get 5 into 5 is 25 and also this comes out to be 128 similarly adding these two values 153 and then dividing by 8 
we get here 19.12 kN. So this is the support reactions here at this point which is 19.12 kN. Now how to find out RAY? Now we can use this equation to find out the RAY. So summation of vertical force is equal to 0. And let's suppose the upward force is taken as positive and the downward force is taken as negative. The upward forces are RA, Y and RB. And the downward force is this one which is uniformly distributed load which is 32 kN. Or we can say minus because it is acting downward 4 into 8. Summation of all the vertical forces equal to 0. So RB we know that it is 19.12. So we can find RAY by shifting this value into the right side. So 4 into 8 32 minus RB and RB is 19.12. So it means the RAY comes out to be 12.88 kN. So this is the way how to find out the support reactions. Now we can draw the shear force and bending moment diagram for this frame after finding out the support reactions. So to start with the shear force and bending moment diagram, let's suppose first we draw the free body diagram for this frame. So it will look like this. This is one column. This is the other column. And this is the beam. So here, starting from this support, RAY is 12.88 kN and RP is 19.12. So this reaction is acting in upward direction with a magnitude of 12.88. And this support reaction horizontal is 5 kN. Now there is also load of 5 kN acting at the midpoint of the column. So 12.88 will be transferred to this point in the opposite direction. So it will be again 12.88. Now, to make this joint in equilibrium, we have to transfer this load into this point, up, but in opposite direction, so it will be 12.88 acting in the upper direction. Now, there is a uniformly distributed load acting on the beam, which is 4 kN per meter. Similarly, starting from this point, 19.12 is acting upward. Now, this load will be transferred to this point in opposite direction. And similarly to make this joint in equilibrium, this load will be acting in the opposite direction to this load, which will be the same magnitude 19.12 and 19.12. So this is the free body diagram for this frame. Now from the help of free body diagram, we will easily draw the shear force diagram. So let's consider again, this is the column. These two are the columns. And this is a beam. So, the shear force diagram is there is only horizontal force acting on this column. So, we will have shear force diagram for this column only. So, 5 kN is acting in outward direction. So, 5 kN. And then there is no load acting on the beam and the column, sorry. So, it will be straight line. And then there is 5 kN acting in the inside direction. So, it will be it will close the box, 5 kN. So this is the shear force diagram for this uh, column. Now to draw the bending moment diagram, and now to draw the shear force diagram for this beam, so there is a 12.88 kN load acting in the upper direction. So starting from here, so 12.88 is the load acting in the upper direction. And then there is a load of 4 kN per meter acting in the downward on this beam. So 4 kN is the load acting on the whole length which is 8 meter length of beam comes out to be 32. So 32 is the downward load acting on this beam. So 12.88 was acting in upward direction minus 32. So here we got minus 19.12. So it means this load makes the shear force minus 19.12. So minus means it will act in the downward from the reference line. So it will be minus 19.12.
this is the negative shear force, this is positive shear force, but it doesn't matter for the shear force diagram, it, it is not dependent on the positive or negative sign. But this is the way how to draw the shear force diagram for this beam. First we take the load acting in the upper direction 12.88, then there is a load 4 kN per meter distributed over the length of 8 meter. So we simply multiply it with the 4 in 8, 32, and then we subtract this value because this is acting in the downward direction and 12.88 was acting in the upper direction. So we got minus 19.2 and this will be the point here at this point which is same as the support reaction is 19.12. It means our shear force diagram is correct. So this is the shear force diagram. Now we have to draw the bending moment diagram from this shear force diagram. So it will look like this. And there is no shear force acting on this column. So the shear force diagram will be zero for this column. Now, after drawing the shear force diagram, we have to draw the bending moment diagram. So starting from this column, there is a magnitude of five kilonewton and it is distributed over the length of five meters. As we can see here, this height of the column up to the load from this point is five meters, so it is five meters. So we can find the area of this rectangle and it will be the bending moment diagram. So the area of this rectangle will be A1 equal to the, this is a rectangle where the height is 5, multiplying it with the distance which is 5 meter. So the area comes out to be 25 kilonewton meter, it is the moment for this co column. So starting from here, so it will be, it was a 0 degree line, it was a straight line if you can see here. So it will be a linear line. So 25 kilonewton meter is the movement here at this point. Up, up to 5 meter distance. So this is the bending moment diagram for this column. How just find out the area of this rectangle? Up to the 5 meters we draw the bending moment diagram. Similarly this column is no shear force so this column will have no bending moment. Now the only bending moment we can find it here from the beam is that this will be the area of triangle. By finding the area of this triangle we can find out the bending moment. So the height is 12.88 but what about the base? Because in area of triangle we need the base and height. So the base is unknown so represented by x. So how to find out this x? We can find out by this method this the 12.88 is the load acting in the upward direction and then minus the load that makes the shear force at zero at this point. We have to find out this point. So how to find out this? 12.88 was acting force in the upward direction and then minus because the force is acting in downward direction and makes the shear force zero at this point which is x. So minus 4 is the load value into x equal to 0. So the point where we have shear force equal to 0, you have to find this x. So 4x equal to 12.88 and x comes out to be 3.22 meter. Now we have the base and height for the triangle. We can find out the area of this triangle which will be A2. So A2 will be equal to the half base into height base is 3.22 and height is 12.88 so the area of this comes out to be 20.7 so this is the area or the movement at this point for this triangle now 20.7 will be the bending moment at this point so but this 25 kilonewton meter will be shifted into this point as we know that this load in this reaction makes a moment in the clockwise direction. So here it will be anti-clockwise with the same magnitude of 25 kilonewton meter and similarly this will be again transferred into this point in the clockwise direction 25 kilonewton meter. And it will be aided with this, the moment which we find out for this, which is A220.7. So 25 plus 
20.7 comes out to be 45.7 kN meter. It should be kept in mind how to transfer the moment throughout the frame. The moment we find out here will be transferred to this point. It was in clockwise, then it will be anti-clockwise, again it will be clockwise, and then this will be added with this one because it also creates the moment in the clockwise direction, the slope. So 25 was from this, added with 20.7, so 45.7 will be moment acting at this point. 45.7 kN meter. Now what will be the area of this triangle? So x was 3.22 meter, so the total length of the beam was 8 meter. So we will subtract this 8 from 3.22. We got here 4.78 meter. So this is the 4.78 meter. So now we can find the area of this triangle, A3. So A3 will be equal to the half based into height, base is 4.78 and height is 19.12. So by finding out the area of this triangle we got here 45.71 kN meter which is the moment term. But hence this is a negative triangle so it will be minus moment. So this was plus 45.7 and we find out minus 45.7 so it will cancel each other and we will have movement zero at this point. So this is the way how to draw the shear force and bending movement diagram. You should keep each point in mind that first we have to find out the support reactions and then we can draw the free body diagram and with the free body diagram you should draw the shear force diagram and with the help of shear force diagram we will draw the bending movement diagram. Hope you guys understand and don't forget to subscribe our channel. Thank you for watching our video.